I actually get a bit of opera there at the beginning of my videos. A little surprise about every single one. Um, this is going to be the second video for core two, core three even, um, and it's going to help you with the assignment seven, which is going to be which is on integration by substitution um, with um, trig functions, or sine functions there, and integration by parts. And this completes um, the chapter on integration. Um, it's the hardest tr chapter, but um, once you practice these techniques enough, they'll become second nature to second nature to you. Okay, so I'm going to go over two basic examples. Um, first example is going to be using substitution, and the second example is using um, integration by parts. So here we go. Solve this integral. So this is the integral of 6x squared sine x cubed plus 1 with respect to x. Okay, now the first thing you notice, which is basically all the integrals in this exam are going to be solved by integral substitution, unless it asks you to solve them by in, um, parts. Here, the clue that you need to do it by substitution is the fact that, oh, a bit mental there, um, inside the brackets, the sine, the angle, sine cubed, x cubed plus 3, if we differentiate that, we get 3x squared. And on the outside, we have it being multiplied by an x squared term. Ignore the 6 at the, at the moment, because the 6 we can just take outside of the integral. But what we do notice is if we differentiate 3x squared plus 1, we get 3x squared. And because we've got this x squared on the outside, it's going to all cancel out. So this is, this is prime time, substitution time. So, just as we would normally, well first of all, I'm going to let my x cubed plus 1 equal the um, substitution rule u. Okay? So, let u equal x cubed plus 1. Okay? Now, as usual, we're going to differentiate this substitution rule to get du dx is equal to 3x squared. Okay? This is basic core 2 stuff. We're then going to need to rearrange this. Even though we say that this isn't a fraction, we're going to rearrange this to make to change the respect to x to respect to u. Okay? Again, this ain't rocket. This ain't rocket science. So du over 3x squared is equal to dx. Okay? So we're now in a position where we can put our substitute our dx for this and we can use the substitution rule and put it all back into this integral to see how this simplifies out. Okay? So we get the integral of 6x squared Get rid of that yet. Multiplied by sine u times dx. Now dx is times by du over 3x squared. And this is really this has worked out really nicely because the x squared is going to cancel here. Okay? So the x squared cancels there. So eliminates the x squared, which to be honest was the thing which was causing us the problem in the first place. 6 and 3 don't cancel, which is a bit annoying, but it's not a biggie because 6 divided by 3 is 2, so we can take 2 outside of the integral. So this becomes the integral of 2 times the integral of sine u du. Now this is our bread and butter. This is a fact which we need to recall. The integral of sine u is minus cos u. Okay? So this is minus 2 lots of cos u. And of course, we also have to have the constant of integration, so plus c. The substitution, to, because the question was in x, we need the answer in x, so we need to re-substitute for u. So the final step is just put minus 2 lots of cos. Now this is x cubed plus 1. So there we have it. There's our answer for that one. There's the old highlight. Okay. okay. Now, as a general rule of thumb, if there are brackets, this is a very general, well, I say a general rule of thumb, which is often broken, but I'm aware that this is going public. I don't want any mathematician coming back to me and telling me that it isn't always true. Rule of thumbs, by de definition, aren't always true. But your substitution rule should always... I mean, if you're lucky in the exam, they might tell you what the substitution rule is. But if they're not, it's, it's usually the bit inside the brackets. 
okay? Besides there, and we talked about this in the lesson, um, if there's an exponential involved, it's usually, it's usually the power. If there's a sine or a cos involved, and there's only a sine or cos involved, then it's the angle, okay? So if it's a fraction, certainly for core three, if it's a fraction, it's the denominator of the fraction, which you need to put the substitution rule, okay? But with practice, you'll be able to um, spot these a lot quickly, a lot quicker. Okay, so the next question, um, it says quite explicitly, solve this integral using integration by parts. Now, the vast majority of the time in the exam, they will t direct you to tell you that you need to do it by parts. Um, this is tricky. I'm not going to lie to you, this is tricky. Um, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Stephen, I've told you about these videos. This is my time, I've got to help the students. This is, this is what I am, the kind of guy I am. Can you stop interrupting me, please? Sorry about that. Unbelievable. Right. Solve this integral using the integration by parts. Now, the integral of x sine x. Now, the trouble is here, you, as I said in the previous bit, that we could have a substitution um, of the angle of x. The trouble is, if we differentiate x, we get 1. And we still get the got x out there. So if we do this substitution, there isn't going to be any neat cancelling down. Okay, so this is this is a tricky one. I have to use integration by parts. And you're going to need to use the formula, which I'm just going to check to see if actually it's in the formula book. You can hear me rubbing through my drawers. Um, formula book tells you that... Um, is it going to be in there? I cannot see it, cannot see it. It is in there, okay? In the formula book, and I'm going to literally quote this, they'll say that the integral of u multiplied by dv dx dx is equal to u multiplied by d minus the integral of v du dx dx. Now, this is we've manipulated the product rule for differentiation and then applied the opposite for differentiation, which is integration. And the idea is we can simplify this integral into the two functions multiplied together, that's fine. There's nothing to do with integration or differentiation. It's just two integrals multiplied together. Minus a simpler integral. Okay? So, we are comparing x to sine x dx. We've got to make, decide which function is u. So this is two functions. We've got x multiplied by sine x. We've got to decide which function is u and which function is dv dx. And this is the tricky part. Which one do you decide? Because you want to make it so that this function becomes simpler. Now, let's just, just think about this. Before we commit anything down, if we let x be dv dx, that means that v, to get work out v, we have to integrate x. Okay, so that gives us x squared over 2. So on this integral, we're going to have x squared over 2. Now, that means that u is sine x. Now, if we different get to u dx, we get cos x. So this integral suddenly becomes x squared cos x. Um, this has made it even, even more difficult, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make u equal to x. I'm going to write it down like this. u is equal to x. And I'm going to make dv dx equal to sine x. A rule of thumb is you want to make the, the VDX the trigonometrical bit because what if, if we keep on differentiating sine, we get cos. If we differentiate it again, we get sine. They kind of it's a they kind of bounce off each other, sine and cos, as we keep on differentiating. These ones, if we differentiate it, however, they eventually cancel down to a zero. If we start with x cubed, for example, and differentiate it, we get three x squared. If we differentiate it again, we get six x. We get to differentiate it again, we get 6. We differentiate it again, we get nothing. We differentiate it again, we get nothing. Eventually, it will cancel down, okay? So, we've got that our u is x and our dv dx is sine x, okay? So, that means that the integral is just literally plugging it in now. So, we've got a formula where I think we've done the half part. It's equal to, right. 
first of all, it's u multiplied by b. Okay, so that's um, u multiplied by b. So, oh, I've got missed a bit out here. Apologies. We need to work out what b is. Okay, and we need that means we need to integrate dv dx. Okay, we're also going to need du dx. So, as a kind of method, I'm going to write down du is x, du dx is one. Oh, that's lovely. What simpler function could there be than one? If we integrate sine x, of course we get minus cos x. Okay. So now we've got all the information u, du, dx, dv, dx, and b. We can just plug them in to that sub formula. Okay, so uv, nothing to do with radioactive lighting. x, violet light isn't radioactive anyway. Um, there we go, x multiplied by minus cos x, so minus x cos x. Hey, the, the answers ain't going to look pretty, but who cares? Um, because you still, um, you still get the answer, basically. So take away the integral of, okay, and it's v multiplied by du dx, okay? So it's minus cos x multiplied by du dx. Hello. This is what's made it so simple. du dx is 1, 1 times minus cos x, it's going to be minus cos x. So that's certainly, minus cos x dx is certainly a lot simpler than an x cubed or an x squared times cos x. Um, just going to extend the old page in. Right. That means, this is what we're trying to find out, is equal to minus x cos x. Now we've got a double negative there. Of course, the signs are positive. Plus the integral of cos x. Now the integral of cos x is pretty straightforward, standard result. So we end up with minus x cos x. The integral of cos x is going backwards, so it's going to be sine x plus the constant of integration, which is c. And we have done. I might want to neaten it up a bit, get rid of that minus. Well, we might want to do it sine x minus x cos x plus c. And there we have our answer. That's exactly what the integral of x sine x dx is. Okay, so. Tricky question, integration by parts. The beauty of it is usually they will tell you that you need to use integration by parts. Um, so you don't waste your time trying to do a substitution which is not going to work. Okay. You want to try and make the second integral simpler. Okay, so that dictates what your u and your dv dx needs to be in the original one. Um, as I was researching this, Yeah, as I was researching this, I looked on um, Wikipedia. Not that I needed to research it, but just to see what was going on, get some questions. Um, I came across this rule, the Liate rule. I've never heard of this before. A rule of thumb proposed by Herbert Tatsude of Bradley University. Never heard of him, never heard of Bradley University. So I don't know how this is Wikipedia, despite it being on the internet, and of course the internet never lies. Everything on the internet is true. That's a fact. But I've never heard of this university, so I don't know how academically um, viable this is. But anyway, advice that whichever function comes first in the following list should be used. This is a kind of bob bid mass for integration by parts. So first of all, log, log functions. Then inverse trig functions, they'll be it will be very unlikely you get an inverse trig function. Algebraic functions, then trig functions, and then your exponential function. So as a rule of thumb, and which for the core three, that should be fine. The reason why log functions come to you is if we differentiate um, ln x, we get 1 over x, which usually um, makes things a lot easier, OK? Um, yeah. So the rule is sometimes written as detail, where D stands for DV, whatever. Um, the Arte rule, something you might want to have a look at. OK. 
Okay. So that concludes the video. Um, see you next week for the next installment of Season 4 3.